On Monday night, we got word of a decision that may be the death knell for the budget proposal made by the majority of this body. The members of the self-styled Freedom Caucus have a refusal to support the plan that their own leadership has put forward. Mr. Speaker, I am truly afraid of what they would offer as an alternative, because the budget being considered in committee this week is a far cry from what American families need. And at its most fundamental level, a budget is two things. It's a guiding document, and it's a statement of values. And the budget that the House committees have put forward, the budget that's not enough for members of the Freedom Caucus, makes it clear that they value special interests more than working families. It's a guiding document to an, American, to an America bereft of opportunity for those who worked or studied or fought for it. My colleagues and I are here on the floor tonight to support a very different plan, a budget that seeks to give everyday Americans the only opportunity they've ever asked for, the opportunity to work hard, play by the rules, and get ahead. It's a budget for the people, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that we call it the people's budget. Mr. Speaker, the Congressional Progressive Caucus budget would invest in our schools, our roads, our bridges, our workers, and our environment to put us back on the path to prosperity in a way that austerity never will. Because the cuts of the past few years should have been made one thing clear, trimming our spending does little to impact the long-term deficit, but it destroys working families, hinders the most vulnerable Americans, and threatens the future of our nation. The people's budget would invest $1 trillion in our roads, railways, and other infrastructure facilities to prevent the kind of devastating failures we've witnessed in Flint, Michigan. The people's budget will fully fund Head Start, capitalizing on one of the best opportunities to give our young people a leg up in an increasingly global economy. The people's budget would take steps to make debt-free college a reality for students, keeping higher education as a ladder into economic prosperity rather than making it a privilege for top earners. The people's budget would fully fund affordable housing programs and would end persistent family homelessness with an investment of $11 billion. The people's budget would take a stand on protecting our environment from further damage, investing in clean and renewable energy resources, and ending subsidies for oil, gas, and coal once and for all. And that's just the beginning. Our economy may be rebounding from the Great Recession, but there are plenty of Americans that have been left behind stuck in roles with low wages and long-term unemployment in the gender and racial pay gaps that persist in this nation or in debt that keeps them from, from progressing in their lives. We can't afford to let this stand, Mr. Speaker. We need a budget for the people, and we need it now. Mr. Speaker, the budget announced by the majority yesterday is truly a roadmap to ruin. It would leave seniors out in the cold by ending the Medicare guarantee. It would gut domestic programming with $6.5 trillion in cuts, the most outrageous and threatening action ever proposed by the majority on the Budget Committee. It would make the gap between average Americans and the wealthy few too great to bridge, taking away any chance at restoring the vibrant middle class our economy relies on. It would do the same thing that my colleagues have tried to do for some time, stack the deck for top earners and the well-connected at the expense of everyone else. The people need change. The people need a plan that levels the playing field, that will give them opportunities to succeed and puts their interests above the interests of corporations and the wealthy. The people need salaries that let them do more than just make ends meet. 
The people need a way to pay for affordable child care while they're at their jobs. The people need education for their children and teachers trained to give students the tools to succeed. They need roads that aren't crumbling and trains that stay on the tracks and bridges and tunnels that connect them with their jobs without hours of traffic and job training to find employment in a changing economy. The people, Mr. Speaker, need the people's budget.